Volume Data 2.1, let's do a, a little real like high overview of how IP addresses and port numbers work on a Synology NAS. So we're going to start, this is going to be a little bit of a series, so this one's going to be real surface level, and then I'm going to dig in a little bit deeper with each following video. So for this one, let's start by using the IP address of our Synology NAS, which if you don't know, like maybe you're using Quick Connect or something, you can actually just go to find.synology.com or one of these other links here on the Synology Knowledge Center, and it'll find your Synology NAS. It'll basically look for every Synology NAS on your network, and you'll be able to connect to it that way. So you also need to make sure you're on the same network as your Synology NAS. So if your Synology NAS is at home, make sure you're also at home. Um, if it's at work, make sure you're also then at work. And then all you got to do is click Connect, and you'll be here if you don't know how to get it. We'll notice something happened, actually. We have this first long number. So this is the IP address of our Synology NAS, and then it's a colon and then another number. And I'm going to erase everything after that because it's not important. If I were to click this, it'll still, it'll still work. So we got two sections here. First is the IP address of our Synology NAS. Every device on your home network, every single one has an IP address, including your laptop, phone, your router. They all get an IP address and they can all talk to each other with these IP addresses. And the thing about that is, is that they can talk to each other as long as they're all on the same network. So I'll come back to that at the end of the video. And you might be thinking, why would I want to do this over Quick Connect? This is typically going to be the quickest way to connect to your Synology NAS. So if you're trying to do file transfers or just accessing other programs on your Synology NAS, using the IP address is typically going to be the quickest way. In the case of a web browser, what we said was, hey, go to the IP address of our Synology NAS. And then we get this colon 5000 or 5001. So in this case, I'm getting 5001. This is called a port number. And a port number is basically a number for defining a service. So we're saying, hey, go to my Synology NAS and then go to whatever service is on port 5001. And in this case, it's a disk station manager. But you can have other services. For example, I've actually got audio station on my Synology NAS. So if I go to port 8801, what I'm saying is, hey, go to the Synology NAS and then go to port, go to the uh, audio station, which is on port 8801. So you can actually specify port numbers for like Synology Photos, Active Backup for Business, all those other Synology programs. Let's go back to DSM. Oh, I went too far back. Okay. You'll notice something else happened though, and that is without typing in anything, it automatically went to port 5001. Here is the deal with IP addresses. If you type in HTTP colon slash slash and then an IP address number, you are automatically asking to go to port 80. So it's saying, hey, you want me to go to the Synology NAS? All right, by default, I'm just going to port 80. If you type in HTTPS and then an IP address, by default, it's going to go to port 443. So if I do that, 86.6 there. So if I type in the IP address of my Synology NAS and just type in colon 443 afterwards, it's automatically going to take me to DSM. And that's because your Synology NAS does have services running on ports 80 and 443, but those services are saying, hey, if anyone's trying to reach me on those ports, go ahead and just send them to whatever port Disk Station Manager is at, which if you go to Control Panel, Login Portal, you can actually change those ports. It doesn't have to be 5,000. It could be port 9. Actually, I don't think it can be that low. It'll let you know if it's, if you're trying to give it a port that is not accessible. But by default, I believe it is 5,000 and 5,001. That, that's how that is working. So that is, that, there's your pretty good overview of how, an IP, of how your Synology NASA's IP address works and how a port number works. So, you know, if you follow a lot of my tutorials, if you go to mm, fleet.linuxserver.io, let's just go to linuxserver.io, docs, container images, and then I'll just click on anything, Calibre. If I scroll down to the Docker Compose, that's what these port numbers are for here. So these very first ones we're changing, they attach to your Synology NAS. That's why we always change these two, and that is because you can't have two programs using, you can't have two services using the same port number necessarily. So that's why we change those. A lot of times they'll try and use port 80 or 443, and that's a, we can't do that because Synology is already using those ports. So that's important to know. Now an interesting thing here, if we click on widgets, First off, widgets, another place you can see your IP address. That's in all my, I think I said and mentioned it in almost all my videos. But if you click on LAN 1, you can see the IP address, or it might be one of these other guys. But more importantly, you actually have a server name. Let's say we don't really want to memorize. Memorizing IP addresses and port numbers is probably not, uh, not the easiest thing in the world to do. But check this out. If I wanted to go to DSM, 
using my LAN or just using the IP address, I guess not using the IP address, just over the local area network, I guess that's why I should put it, you can type in the name of your server dot local. So I can type in nightvision.local and it'll still take me to Disk Station Manager and it still works with IP addresses. So if I type in nightvision.local colon 8801, which I know is the port number for audio station, it'll still take me to audio station. So there's one way of not having to memorize a very long number. You can imagine, I hate saying these IP addresses over and over again here. It sounds ridiculous, I feel like it's confusing. The other thing you can do for Synology specific programs, you can actually go into the control panel, login portal, click on applications, and you can do two things. I can double click an application. Actually, you can do a lot of things, but two things here specifically. You can change the port number so you can make it custom. For example, I could make everything like, I could say I want everything on a port, you know, 8,000 to 8,005. So I'd just be like, you're on 8,001, you're on 8,002. Blah, blah, blah. Um, I think you'll get, yes, yeah, see, this one, it'll also give you an error if it's already being used by something. But let's say I'm on 12,000, 12,001. I can do that. But I can actually make my life even easier, and that is to create what's called an alias. So if you type in active backup, like it says here, you can access your Synology NAS with the IP address forward slash active backup. Or I like to keep it super short. So in this case, I'd probably just type in ABB, and that's because when you're on a phone, it's kind of a pain to always type in something long. So if you can keep it down to just two or three letters, a lot of times that'll work well. Like for Synology Photos, usually I'll just use PH. Um, for audio station, I might just type in music or audio. That's pretty quick. But that is how an alias would work. And that'll still work with the local name. So if I did ABB and I click save, and then I went to nightvision.local slash ABB, it'll take me to the launch page for active backup for business. Pretty good stuff, right? So why would you want to do this in the first place? The reason is actually because of speed. It's typically the quickest way for your devices to talk with each other. If you're using Quick Connect, that actually kind of shoots a signal out, I think somewhere to Synology servers first and then to you. So you might notice a slowdown when you're trying to download stuff or when you're working with certain programs. So this is typically a, a, the faster and easier way of doing it is by using an IP address or, or your, uh, your server's name. That's a pretty quick way of doing it. If you're using um, SMB, which is a way of sharing folders, you can just go to Control Panel and check it out. File services, no, not file services. Is it file services? Yeah, it is file services. SMB, check it out. In my Mac Finder, if I just use SMB Night Vision, that'll take me to my server. So I've got a Finder window open here. I can just do Command K and type in SMB Night Vision and connect, and it'll give me all my folders that are on my Synology NAS. So pretty convenient. And that's gonna be the quickest way to get from, to get files between my computer and my NAS or read files. That'll probably be the quickest way of doing it. Another good thing too, knowing about IP addresses and port numbers is that you can, you have a powerful tool and that's the Synology firewall. So for example, you could, even, you could go to the control panel, security, and then firewall. Let's just say that I had a new one, edit rules. This is not gonna be a firewall tutorial, but just so you kind of can put together what you just learned with something practical. You can create firewalls based on these IP addresses and port numbers. So I could say, let's just go to select a list of built-in applications and check it out. Let's just say I've got Synology Photos here and it's running on these two ports here. I can just click OK and I could specify that um, I know that there's somebody, there's a machine in my household that I don't want accessing Synology Photos. So maybe you've got a roommate or something and you hate that they get on Synology Photos and they're constantly uploading pictures of goblin sharks that live very deep under the sea because goblin sharks are disturbing looking. You could just say, hey, okay, the IP address of my roommate is 192.168.1.20. I'll click OK and I can deny them access to Synology photos. Or I could come into this list and deny them access to any and everything that I wanted to on my server. Or you could just allow traffic from your devices. So if you don't want anybody to access your Synology NAS except for you, you could say, hey, um, you can just click all. You can just say, hey, here are the IP addresses. You can do a range or you could do different IP addresses. And you can say, hey, only these, only these devices can access my Synology NAS. I would recommend being very careful with that kind of stuff, though, because you could screw things up. That's why this is not a tutorial on how to use a firewall. But I just wanted to show you how you can use IP addresses and port numbers for that. So when you're in here and looking at the list of applications, you can see it's using the port numbers in order to allow or deny access. So good stuff to know. I'm not going to save any of that. 
But yeah, so there are so there is a drawback here to using this method, and that is that you cannot access your you can't use this method outside of your home network. So if you're at work and you want to access your Synology NAS at home, or you're at the airport, or you're traveling, you're going to have to use a different method. You can use Quick Connect, and if that works for you, I definitely recommend using it. If you're interested in something, though, perhaps you've heard of a VPN. That is what I'm going to try and do in the next series. So it's going to be more about how your machines each have different IP addresses and can talk to each other, and how they can access each other from outside. Another thing, too, that I wanted to note is ports can be a little bit confusing. For example, if you come in and go to Synology Photos, let me see here, where's Photos? There you are. You'll notice it's still using port 5001 in here. But I can also, actually, I should have done a different one. Let me do Audio Station. If I go into Audio Station, you will, oh, no, that's not working either. Okay, you'll notice it's still using port 5001, but you can use that login page and specify a different port for each of these applications if you want to. Um, I'm not 100% I'm not sure on how Synology divvies out port numbers, but they do have a whole list of what programs use what port numbers. I think what's happening is a lot of this stuff, because it's on DSM, I think Synology's operating system is just on its own port number. And they're doing some behind the scenes stuff to put different programs on different port numbers when it's needed. So that might be a little bit confusing, but what's less confusing is if you're following one of my tutorials and let's say you're putting Calibre on here and you'll notice that we always change, a lot of times we'll change port numbers here, or but we are accessing using this first port number. That's what's happening. Basically, Calibre cannot use any of the ports that Disk Station Manager is using, so that's why if we're changing one, we are. Um, none of these Docker programs are going to be able to do that. They all have to have a, pro, a, a they all have to have a port number that's not currently being used. So that's why we change them. But they can use your Synology's same IP address. That's what they're going to do typically. You will also notice that we never change the second one. That's also a that's a topic for a different video. That would be do Docker networking, but. Hopefully I made a little bit of sense. The main gist of it is, is that if you really want the quickest way to connect to your NAS, you can use the IP address of your Synology NAS and then use the port number in order to access a specific service. And that is sort of real high level basic understanding of IP addresses and port numbers for your Synology NAS. Good luck to you.